good morning, good afternoon. My name is Gareth Anderson. As uh, you've just been told, I'm a customer support director here at SDR, uh, managing our language enterprise products, of which Multitrans is, is in one of them. Uh, so I'll just go through basics of the, the support portal or the, the SDL customer gateway, as we call it. Uh, so as part of the presentation and call today, uh, I'll go through the platform support resources, uh, the benefits of using the support portal, how you can engage with support, uh, some of the basics around the SDL community uh, and a live demo of the system, the SDL customer gateway. So there are multiple different resources, uh, which you can see from this slide. Um, so in the community, which I'll demonstrate later, this is where you'll be able to um, find out information around the, the product itself. And um, so information around releases, You'll also be able to engage with other um, customers or peers uh, or SDL staff around uh, different aspects of the product. Um, we have documentation around our products. Again, you'll be able to find that uh, a link to that directly from the customer gateway. Uh, we have a knowledge based system. Um, again, I'll, I'll demonstrate that shortly. And finally, the, the main, the most important thing on this slide is the SDL customer gateway. Um, so the other three things in green, we can all access directly from the customer gateway. The benefits of using the, the support portal. Um, so the first one is the simplified case logging. So making it nice and easy to log a case. And we've got a, a big blue button that's available on the main screen. Um, that you can always click just to, to create a, a case at any point. Um, the ability to identify a case, urgency and impact. So in support, we talk about priority quite a lot, um, but actually that's defined automatically using impact and urgency. And we'll cover that shortly on, on how that, that works. Uh, fast case, case routing, so relevant and knowledgeable support engineers. So as long as the case is logged against the correct products, then that will automate through to the, the team, the support team looking after that product. Um, we've got an enhanced My Support page, which provides visibility on open and closed cases. You can also do searches on there if you're looking for a specific case. And the self-serve capabilities. So. Um, we've got a knowledge based system which you can search through to look at, at specific articles if, if you want to. Or as you're logging a support case, it also comes up with ideas on, on what articles might be useful towards uh, fixing or resolving an issue that you're currently experiencing. So, what sort of information should you include when logging a support case? Um, there are set fields on there to select what um, version of the subject, uh, the sof sorry, of the software and what environment you want to, to raise the case against. Um, does it, is it against the production system or if you have a test or a development system that are affected, if you could log it against those? Um, basically, the more information that you can provide, the better. So. One of the key ones on this slide is steps to reproduce. If you can tell us what the issue is and what the expected outcome is and how you got to the, the position that you're, that you're um, suffering from, um, the, so the, the steps to reproduce. So for example, um, you can log in, uh, but you can't get onto a specific page, then that's perfect. Um, if you can log or attach any support case, um, if you can log or attach any um, screenshots or error messages, then that's always useful. Um, if the files are too large to associate and attach to the case, if you can upload those to an FTP site somewhere and then provide the, the details of how we can access that FTP site, then that's also beneficial. And if you require a working session, such as a, a WebEx similar to this or a Skype call, then please um, just tell us when you're available um, and we'll, we'll set those up, but just make sure that you've got all the relevant information available on your side for that call. So if you need access from um, a different person within your business, such as in IT, 
client uh, person, then, then that's brilliant. Okay, so this slide just demonstrates what we're talking about when we, we, we refer to priority. So as I stated before, priority is defined by impact and urgency. Um, it's as simple as we can probably make it at this point. So urgency, you know, it's either critical, high, it's medium or low. When we talk about impact, it either impacts all users or some users. It's either got a workaround in place or there's no workaround. Now, if you pick something as, as critical and it's all users and uh, no workaround or some users with no workaround, then that effectively says it's a critical case, which would be a P1 case. Now, when I'll, I'll show you this in the demo shortly, when you do this, we've got the ability that you can provide business impact or, or a, a description around why something is urgent. And um, because then the more information that you provide, the, the easier it is to, to acknowledge. And this sort of information is all available in the, the community uh, and we can show you how to access those later. Uh, so don't worry too much for now if this isn't, if, if I'm going through it a little bit too quick. We have a set escalation process in place. So the first stage of any escalation process would be to escalate via the support case. Again, I'll demonstrate this shortly. And there's a simple button to click on, on the support case. And uh, then that flags it to, to SDL and the SDL support team and the management team. Uh, at that point, we have to confirm that escalation and then the icon will change so you can see that we have acknowledged that. If for some reason you need to escalate uh, a case further, we'd suggest that you email support managers at sdl.com. Um, there are around 35 to 40 people globally on that support email address, um, all the way from senior support engineers to support managers, all the way up to a VP or an executive within SDL. Uh, so it, is quite, it does have high visibility. And as I say, we are global. Uh, so we do aim to try and respond to your your requests within about two business hours uh, of the, in, within the time zone. And third and final, if things still haven't progressed or you feel like you need to escalate further, and uh, maybe for, for some particular reason, you know, you've had an outage and it's something might be down for, for days on end and you just don't feel like you're getting anywhere, then the third and final part would be to contact the Global Client Services leadership team. And again, that's got our, uh, our executive from Global Client Services on there, and it's got VPs uh, as well. Now, these same people are all on the support manager's email address, but this is just uh, specific to the leadership team at this point. Global support. So we've got support teams based in Europe and in North America at the minute. So um, it does say Montreal, uh, but we've got Montreal and we've got Gatineau, um, roughly around the same sort of time zone. And um, we're also trying to hire people at the minute based in Sheffield in the UK office. Now, um, I don't think that anyone has already been set up with support access to the new system as yet. That's something that will be uh, set up later this week. I believe Thursday the 13th is when the support accounts will be created for supported users. Um, so I will demonstrate shortly how you can manage your users and accounts. Um, so this is just to, to quickly sort of demonstrate what the screen looks like and how you can access it. So. It's, it's probably easier that I demonstrate this later, but it's, again, it's a relatively straightforward system that you log on to OOS and then you go through the accounts and then the account details. And if you're the account administrator, you can add additional supported users there. We have um, communities. So SDL communities are quite varied. We've got communities by products or by, um, different functions at times. So there are, there are communities dedicated to how Gateway works and if you need any additional resources. Um, we've also got information that you can see, uh, sorry, that you can share with your peers or where you can interact with them. 
Um, you can post things you're allowed to reply to, other questions or comments if you have any relevant information. And we also have the ability to suggest enhancement requests for the product. And again, you can vote on that. If so, if somebody else creates an enhancement request to say that I think the product should do this particular action, then that's available then for other customers to, to view. And if you think that that's a really good idea and you'd like to see that implemented, then you have the ability to vote on that, to, to vote it up or vote it down, depending on what, how you feel about it. Um, obviously, the more votes that something gets, the, the more likelihood that that potentially might get dealt with in future. Um, on the communities, you've also got the ability to see upcoming events that are about to take place in the, the not too distant future around either the support system or the products or just other uh, events in general around what SDL do. Um, as I say, there are special interest groups around products or around different functionality uh, functions within the system. We have a developer assist center um, for particular products. I don't think that's relevant at this point in time to multi-trans. And we've got resources available. So looking at, at documentation or links to documentation um, or specific actions around um, how to communicate with support or looking for training needs. So at this point, I will demonstrate the system. So if I go to here, this is what we refer to as the SEL customer gateway. So it's a relatively straightforward system. <clears throat> if you can see in the top right hand corner here, um, it shows that I'm logged in at the minute as a demo user. If I wasn't logged in, it'd ask me if I wanted to log in or sign up at that point. And you click in there, you log in using the, the credentials, credentials that will be provided to you later this week. Uh, and this is what you see. So you can access the gateway without being logged in. The only difference being you wouldn't be able to log a support case at this point if you weren't logged in. So this big blue log a case button wouldn't be visible or the, the information about cases specific to you and your account. The green toolbar here um, demonstrates the different areas that you can go to. So my support, I will cover, talk about shortly. And again, same with knowledge base technical documentation. Um, so this is particularly useful if you want information specific about the product. So we've got information in there already around multi-trans or if you've got any other SDL products such as Studio or um, Machine Translation Cloud or Edge, you can find that information there. There's a link to SDL communities, which again, I will demonstrate shortly. Or again, if you have um, Trados Studio, and there are any language uh, sorry licensing issues there's a, a quick guide on on types of things to troubleshoot and potentially resolve things there uh, and if by the end of that they still can't resolve the issue then again you can log a support case so for now if i just look at the knowledge base um now there is a section here on this main screen talking about the latest articles these are the latest articles that have been created by sdl support uh, they might not be relevant to you because there's no filter on here at this point. Now, if you know exactly what you want to look for, you can type something into the, the search bar. And if I press search, then it will pull up any articles that are relevant to, to that search. And you can see already it's, it's automatically to, taken me to the knowledge base. Now, I've done a search for Multitrans and it's brought up a list of issues, uh, sorry, articles that could be relevant to you. Now, if you want to filter something down further, you can filter down by an article type. So it might be a frequently asked question. It might be something about the product life cycle, release information, um, user guide, anything along those lines, or you can filter down by category filter. So some of these articles might not be um, applicable to multi-trans as in a multi-trans end user or multi-trans flow end user these might be things around trado studio and accessing multi-trans or using multi-trans translation memories so you can always uh, filter down further so if you wanted to filter down by category uh, we say look into language enterprise and then you can always click on sdl multi-trans now again 
the more information that you put in here, the more likely that you're going to get down to a filtered um, list of articles that are relevant to you. If I look at some of the articles um, individually, so knowledge base articles are rich text formats. So it could be, I mean, as you can see here, we've got information that's written in bold, but you can also have, see occasionally images in there or hyperlinks to other relevant information. And they all follow a similar type of flow. So we talk about what the scope or the environment is, what the question is that we're trying to answer, and then the answer to that particular question. Um, there sometimes is relevant reference information uh, as well available. So it might be that it's got a link to the uh, documentation about a particular product release, for example, or a community post potentially that's, that's available, applicable. Now, if at any point you want to provide feedback, it might be that this really is a useful um, article and you want to tell us that it fixed something within a certain time frame then please, we've got this button here that says send article feedback and we'll take through a, a list of questions. Um, it might be that you think that an article's missing a certain bit of information or there's certain parts of it might be inaccurate at, at something. Again, if you can provide in, information back and provide that feedback, then we can take another look at that article. And if there is something wrong, we can potentially rectify that. Okay. If I just go back to, so from, from the home screen, if I just demonstrate logging a support case, so all I need to do is click on the support uh, log a case button. As you can see, um, the account and the username are automatically filled in because you're logged into the system. If you want somebody else to be copied into any updates about that support case going forward, um, then you can add their email address. Now that could be a, an individual user or it could be a group email address that you could add there. So this is an example. Um, select the product that you want to raise the support case against. So this, the, the products that are listed will be products against your account. So if you are all multi-trans users and you don't have any other products available, then you'll just see STL multi-trans TMS select the product and then from there just we, we just want to filter down and provide a little bit more information so the sub product so is it against multi -tra multi trans the main product or is it against flow and then what component about the product is there so multi trans client server other uh, i'll just log it against the server for now and then um, installation for example now, the subject is quite a, a key field. Um, we want you to be relatively um, clear and concise here. But again, the, the more information that you can add to a subject, the better, because this links into the knowledge base. So if I say, um, I'm able to license multi-trans, you can see on the right-hand side, it's thinking about it. It comes up with a list of suggested suggested articles that might be relevant to your issue. Now at this point, if you can see an article that you think might be worthwhile, I suggest you right mouse on it and open it in a new tab or a new window and just take a look at it. Because if that solves your problem, then that prevents you requiring the need to, to raise a support case and it might fix that issue quicker for you. If there isn't anything there that's relevant for you or you still want to log a support case, again, that's that's fine, That's that's good. Um, just carry on and add more information about what the issue is. So uh, steps to reproduce, um, expected outcomes, um, what the results were that you're actually seeing, and then oops, any other relevant information. Um, so again, like I said before, the more information that you can put in the description, the better. It might be that you've got uh, an error message that you, you want to copy and then that's good because we can search for particular error messages or chunks from the error message. Um, it might be that it, it, it 
pulls out certain information that you know, is relevant. Um, the next window down is the customer reference. Now we understand that different companies may have their own support systems in house. So you might want to re um, reference a, a, an internal support case ID or something along those lines. Or it might be that you want to flag it for somebody or make it easy to search for in the future. So uh, if I just write anything in there, we can see that information later and we'll be able to, to point that out. Um, again, we talked about impact and urgency. So how many users does that affect? And is there a workaround in place? So um, some users, some users work around in place. Um, some users are able to log in. And then the urgency, again, this depends on, on how critical you think uh, an issue is. Now, as we can see here, there's another box where you can describe why you want that to be a set urgency. Again, if you can provide information that, that gives a business impact around this, then that's better because if, especially if you're picking something that says critical or high, uh, we just want to make sure that your understanding and our understanding of something are aligned so that we don't under, straight away look at something and think, to me, that doesn't instantly come across as a, as a critical issue. Um, for me personally i would say that a critical issue would be something that's system down or major functional or functionality within the system that's unavailable essentially making it as good as down at that point however it might be that there's something that you urgently need to get out for any particular reason and um, maybe there's uh, an important hr bit of information that needs to be translated and it's got to be done by the end of today because it, it relates to um, a serious legal issue or financial implications or something anything along those lines just if you can provide the information you need that's better and then at the bottom of the screen you've got the ability to attach five attachments if you want to each of these attachments i think can be up to 25 megabytes in file size um, again, you don't have to attach anything at that point. You've also got the ability to attach things at a later date. Finally, I'll just click Submit Case. And this is the, the case detail screen. So as we can see, this is all the information that I put into the case. So we've got the subject, we've got the description of what it is. There's no resolution because it's only just been raised. And we've got the customer reference field that is applicable just to, to me as an end user. And where we said about impact and urgency before and how that relates to priority, this has been raised as a P3. Now at this point, any case updates that go on there, either from yourself or from SDL support, will go under the communications tab and they'll all be listed along underneath there. If for any reason we attach an attachment or maybe you attach something else, then they will be stripped out and put separately in the attachments um, section. So it might be that you add an attachment and write a case comment at the same time. The case comment will go under communication and the attachment will go under the other tab. So please reference what the attachment name is, uh, just in case there are multiple attachments. And if there are any knowledge base articles that SDL believe are relevant to this issue, uh, we'll associate that article to this case and that will be flagged under knowledge. Uh, it could be that there's more than one article and um, depending on what the issue is. Now on the right hand side, we can see the list of quick actions so we can add a comment. Um, and we'll see that that will be listed under the communication. And it tells me who, who logged it and the time and date. Um, we can change the impact or urgency. So it might be that, you know, at first we said it was affecting some users, but there's a workaround in place. Actually, now it's affecting all users and there's no workaround, uh, which means that it's really become urgent and we need something fixing urgently. Okay, and again, as I type that and press submit, the 
comment that I've added will be added under the communication tab. But because I've changed the impact and urgency, it's also made a change to the priority. And we can see this is now logged as a P1 support case, which is the most urgent of, of support cases from the SDL standpoint. Again, you don't have to just raise priority up. Priorities could go down. Uh, so it might be that at first, potentially, for example, you see a system down. Then after a certain amount of time, um, while people are looking at it, you might see that that system has then become available. You might want to change the impact and urgency uh, just to say, look, we can now log into the system. We still want to know why we couldn't see it before. We want to understand the root cause. So you'd still want that support case to stay open, but you might want to just admit, uh, sorry, to, to lower the impact and urgency at that point. As I said, you can add uh, different case contexts. So it, it might be that you've got additional supported users on the account. Um, so as you can see here, we've got two people on this account. At this point, if I click the plus button, that instantly adds Joe as a, as a watcher to this support case. If you've got somebody that isn't logged as a supported user, you could just add them as a, as a particular email address. Oops. And then every time that a case comment goes on, that end user will also receive the, the case updates at the same time. Now, at this point, it's worth pointing out that if you have got a case comment that you want to add to a support case, you don't necessarily have to log into the support system to update it. Once you've logged this support case, you will receive a, an email from the support system to say, thank you for logging a support case. This is your unique case ID. Uh, as you can see here, that's this. Um, and if you want to reply directly to that support case uh, and update it, then reply to that email and it will update the support case. Now, the only things are, don't change the, 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 the recipient. So just re press reply and you can, and you know, don't delete that user out just in case it doesn't make it back to the support system. And please don't modify the, the email subject because there's a, a unique, uh, almost like a GUID at the end of the subject, which is relevant to that support case, as well as this case ID. And that just makes sure that the, the correct support case is getting updated. Okay, um, so at this point, if I go back to home, you can see that the, the last case that I've just created is under my top cases. So top cases here list the support cases that have been raised last or potentially have had case updates that have been unread. Uh, anything like that might be would be fine, I think, in, in like a yellowy colour, so just to highlight it. If I click on My Support, this is where you have the ability to view all open or closed, closed support cases uh, against your account. So here we can see that there are three support cases that are open by my particular user on this account. Um, this was the last one that's been raised, and I know that because I can remember the, the subjects, and I also put a customer reference in, so it's easy to find. Now, it might be that I've got 20 cases open, and 30, anything along those lines. You, you know, there might be a lot of activity on your account for any particular reason, and you want to search for something. And you, you might just be able to do a quick search. So if I know what the case ID is, so I can see that my case finish is 531, I could just type in 531 and it will filter it down to any anything that says 531. Thankfully, there's only that one support case. Again, I know that I've got a customer reference in for that last case, so uh, attention of. So again, quick search and it just filters it down. Likewise, I can search for my closed cases. Uh, now, when we migrate the support cases over, we are only going to migrate the open support cases over. So you won't be able to search for closed cases from the previous support system. But after a given amount of time, you might have built up a, a list of closed cases that you might want to refer back to. So you can just do a quick search in here and you can click on the case ID and that'll take you to the case details screen. There's a, a little radio button here. That's again, it's available on both of these tabs and it says show all items across the account. So at the minute you can only view the cases on this screen for the things that I've raised against my user. 
if I click on this button, I can now see any case open for, on this account by any supported user. So normally you have four supported users. Now if the other three people have all logged support cases and you want to be able to see what's happening on them, then you've got that ability to do so. And again, you can just do the same filtering out if you want to. Okay. Um, and basically that's the support system. Nice, easy, streamlined system. Quite quick and easy to log a support case and the ability to look in a knowledge base as well. Now, if I just go on to uh, the SDL accounts, so as I have briefly touched on before, your supported users, I believe, should be set up on Thursday, the 13th of February. Um, if you are an account administrator at that point, you have the ability to add other supported users on there. So if I click look over account and then account details, it just tells me what the account name is and the account type. And it shows me the, the users on this account uh, name at this point. So I've got three people that are set up as supported users. Uh, as I said before, you can have up to four, generally speaking. Um, there is the ability that you can add additional supported users if you want to, uh, but generally they come at, at a cost. So if you do want to do something like that, it's generally a good idea to speak to your account manager first. So there are different types of users. Um, the main user that I'm referring to here that can add and, and remove users um, or change levels of access as an administrator. So if you're an administrator, you can create other users and you can also create other support administrators. Um, you just need to add a person's first name, last name and email address, and then fill in certain information about the address where they're working from, and then click I confirm and create contact. And that will add a, an extra person here. Now, if somebody leaves and you don't want them to have access or for any other reasons that you want to remove access, again, you just change that to say act from active to, uh, to deactivate it, sorry. And then you could click save changes. And that will remove that person's support access. They're still logged in here as a supported user, uh, but they aren't active on the system. They won't be able to log in and create cases or anything like that. Um, as well as having administrators, you've got support users. So a support user is somebody that can create support cases or also has the ability to view um, licensing information in here um, or um, get look at quotes as well, potentially for other activities that you might be looking at. The third and final type of support user would be access support only. So this is somebody that, that can't make any changes to the account. They can't look at quotes or any licensing details, but all they can do is they can create or view support cases in the SEO customer gateway. Okay, um, I hope that's again, relatively clear. Um, there are more, there's more information about this on the communities. Um, so I'll just click, click, quickly look at communities. So again, if you have any interests particular to you, you can log into the communities. Again, you, you just need to sign up to it and um, when you, you just click on there, and you can look through the different um, different communities that are available to you. So for you guys, um, Multitrans would be the main one, I suppose. So I could do a quick search and we can see content specific to there, or I can look at groups and do a quick search. And there I'm on that group. Um, it might tell me that I need to sign up to the group if I've not already done so. But once you've done that, you also have the ability to, to change if you want notifications from this group. So you might be an avid community user where you want to look on there and keep up to date daily for what, or uh, every few hours. Or it might be that you don't necessarily want to log in as frequently, but you still want to be kept updated. Um, so you can change the email options that you receive, how often you receive updates about this community. Um, and that could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be as and when something's posted. 
The other option to try and find something in a community would be to click on that or look over, hover over the hamburger symbol. And then we go to, for example, events and resources, and we can look at support SDL customer gateway. So where I've just demonstrated the support portal, and we've also got all this information that's already available here. So there are different posts, or we've got um, information and that could also be available. Um, so you could click on frequently asked questions, but might be you want to look at some of the videos. And there you go, that's the um, gateway and the support accounts and the SDL communities all quickly run through. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth, for presenting on this topic. We are now going to open up the Q&A session for today. To ask a question, again, please use the Q&A panel located on the right-hand side at the bottom of your screen. So I can see a question in there um, about support in Asia or APAC and uh, specifically around Japan. Um, so currently we have one uh, support engineer that we share with a different support team that's able to, to support um, users in that time zone. However, it might be that if they are particularly busy or off for some reason that we have to with the support for those users in APAC out of um, EMEA, so Sheffield or out of Canada. Um, we'll still try and do all we can to contact and communicate with that user. Uh, but at this point, it might be, it might be that we have difficulties communicating with the user in their own language. It is something though, that we can look at going forward. Um, so there's another follow-up question. What impact will that have on timing? I presume you're talking about, um, yeah, users based out of Tokyo, out of Japan. Um, so I think it just depends on what the issue is. If, if it's a critical issue, when you raise uh, the support case, if you log it as critical, we do have people that are available on call, so we can always try and pull those out, those resources out on call during that time zone. If it's something that's not as critical and that we can deal with um, in a timely manner, but from a different time zone, uh, then we'll look to do that. Um, the next question, can we communicate in other languages other than English? Um, so we don't have any support in German. However, we do have support in French out of the Canadian team. So I think all of our support engineers based out of Canada can all speak French. So there's another question. Uh, if we have several problems, do we have to create several cases? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention that before. That's really important. Um, if you can create one support case per issue, that makes it easy to track. Um, because we also want to make sure that uh, the information that we post into support cases are relevant to the issue at hand. Uh, it also prevents us from missing anything. So if, if multiple issues are logged in the same case, might be that something gets lost along the way uh, or we, we can't provide necessarily all the support in there and so one case per issue would be greatly appreciated and if we do find a, a follow-up issue 
as we're going along. It might be that as a support team, we raise a case on your behalf just to make sure that we cover that and we don't we track it and we don't lose that information along the way. Are there any other questions? If there's no other questions, Eric, you're not seeing any more. I'm not seeing anything more now. Um, if you do have any more questions, the best thing that I could suggest at this point would probably be to log into the SDL communities and sign up to the support and then in brackets SDL customer gateway community and you can always add a question on there and we can get back to you and if there's anything else that you think is more urgent at this point then you can always email support managers at stl.com and we can respond to you quicker uh, the, the benefit of doing it on communities though is that other people might have got the same question and then we can share that information around Okay. Well, thank you, Gareth, again, for presenting on today's topic. Um, for all folks that attended today's call, you will be receiving a copy of this video recorded presentation. I'd like to thank you again for attending our webinar, and we hope you found the information useful as well as informative. And we'd like to wish you a great rest of your day. Thank you for attending.